And our first program comes from the United States Department of Justice. And Thomas Campbell and Neil Whitley Ross will be, be presenting. And the program, by the way, is a secure electronic network for travelers rapid inspection, uh, Century for short. Good morning. My name is Tom Campbell. I'm an Assistant Chief Inspector with the United States Immigration Service. I've been with the service for 10 years now. I've been an agent on the border, I've been a criminal investigator, and I've been an inspector. I know the border. With me today is Neil Whiteley Ross, and in the next few minutes we will convince you of the innovative changes the Sentry program has achieved in international travel. Sentry, the secure electronic network for the traveler's rapid inspection, is the world's first automated border inspection process that enhances border integrity and efficiency. Land border inspections have remained the same since time immemorial. Travelers are assaulted by an immigration officer who asks a barrage of questions. Based on this brief encounter, the inspector makes a decision whether to admit that traveler or not. As international travel has become more commonplace, the number of crossers have grown. By the 1990s, people could wait trapped in their cars for two hours just to reach an Im immigration inspector. <laughs> At one port, the U.S. government built an enormous port, 24 lanes wide and staffed it. Still, the lines grew longer. In March of 1995, 14 line employees of six different federal agencies sat down to create a better way. This unique partnership worked hand in hand with the federal government of, United, of Mexico, the state governments of Mexico, the state of California, and others. As a result, Sentry was born. Sentry turned the inspection process on its head. As Century travelers begin the process in an interactive, customer-friendly enrollment center, they share more than 200 biographical facts and allow the Century team to verify these facts. <coughs> Century's pre-screening confirms that a Century participant poses little or no threat to our border, that they know and will comply with the dozens of laws that affect international travel. In return for their trust and cooperation, Century gives the participant a lane of their own. As participants approach the border, electronics in the car and in the roadway activate computer systems that validate the vehicle and the occupants of the car before they reach the inspector and every time they cross the border. A sentry inspection takes no more than a few seconds and no sentry traveler waits more than a few minutes to enter the United States. Sentry's process works. It works and takes into account all the needs of the interested parties, especially the customer. Since Century opened, more than 800,000 people have entered the United States through a Century port of entry. Not one Century participant has violated an INS or U.S. Customs law. <coughs> Excuse me. As Century expedites traffic through its lanes, average wait times overall at the port are reduced. This gives inspectors working in the other lanes more time to spend on the higher risk traffic. Century's success has led Congress to request the deployment of Century to eight other cities. Today, Sentry's process has been replicated at the Border Patrol's San Clemente checkpoint and at two northern border ports. It has been studied by six other countries from across the globe. The Sentry process of pre-screening participants and inspecting them automatically can be used anywhere people are regularly access a secure area. Sentry is the way of the future, making a difference today. My colleague, Neil Whiteley Ross. Mr. Chairman, my name is Neil Whiteley Ross. I spent the last nine years as the Vice President of National Affairs for San Diego Regional Economic <coughs> Development Corporation, serving capacities as the Chairman of the Border Trade Alliance, a national organization focused on the betterment of the border, and I'm glad to be here this morning. I've been asked to just discuss briefly about how the Century Program has impacted our community and how it could impact all the other communities that are applying for that service. As was touched on by Tom, it used to be where you'd wait one or one and a half, even two hours in the line of the border. The stress was very high. In the mid-90s, when NAFTA was passed, trade started to flourish, and the inspectors got more stress, the passers got more stress, millions of dollars of man hours was wasted of people sitting in line trying to use a cell phone or trying to do that. And families were impacted negatively because of that service. And so we, close, working closely with the INS and other inspect, inspection agencies, dedicated a lot of time and energy to put this program together to make sure that we could facilitate, facilitate bodies crossing at the border. We feel very proud of how far it's come. It's been very successful. I am a user two or three times a week. I drive up, I drive on, and I drive home. 
and it makes a very large impact on my life. Working closely with Century, we look forward to expanding it across the entire southwest border because of how, how much it's impacted our communities. We're glad because trades improved. We're glad because prices have come down. We facilitate better business. And obviously, through this service and how we've impacted, we facilitate a better, a better quality of life. We feel very confident that this project will move forward. It's evolved out of its stage as a pilot. It is now a fully functional system, which works very well at the border. And as a final note, Mr. Chairman, I want you to know that the Padres are lulling the, the Yankees into a sense of security. <laughs> Questions? Please. Uh, can you elaborate some on, on what data you have <clears throat> as far as showing that this is effectively a secure system? Yes, sir, I can. In general, people coming through a port of entry, uh, this large population on the southern border of about 474 million people to cross every year, they're referred for <laughs> secondary or more intensive inspections about 5% of the time. In the Century Lane, for instance, in Otay Mesa, my population is known at about 4,000. That 4,000 people, about 50% cross daily. And that 50% that crosses daily goes to secondary inspection more frequently than the unknown populace coming through. So that population is scrubbed every day at a higher rate than everybody else, at about 6%. Have a question about uh, the motorists who are not part of the Century program and their attitudes. I, I think we're all accustomed to the fact that in, when you purchase like a, a seat on an airplane, you can pay more and get first class and whatever, but that's what we choose because that's a, a private offering. I'm wondering about the attitudes of people who are not involved, who do not pay the fee, perhaps cannot pay the fee. Uh, I'm sure that there are those that would find it a, an economic hardship and their attitudes toward having to wait in line for what essentially is a taxpayer service that others are getting special treatment for. I'll let my colleague address this now. Um, being, being involved in the community for the last nine years, I had to address that issue. It was called Elite Program. It was called Special American Program. It was called everything by the press trying to stimulate disinterest and or uh, disharmony. We found that the Century Lane take so many people out of that frequent crosser that it dropped the crossing time on both sides. And so those that cross once a month to do grocery shopping or twice a month to go see their cousin found that they were saving 50% of their time in the normal line. And so over the last couple of years, we've seen a great increase in uh, the ability of people to drive up and drive on through the border. So there's no dissension for the non-user. It costs about $150 a year when you look at fingerprint costs and the, the search that's done. That money is for the frequent crosser or someone who goes to school every day or a businessman who can't afford to sit in line and waste that valuable time. But the non-user has benefited greatly because that frequent crosser is not in line anymore. And so everybody seems to be winning with this program. In your write-up, you have data um, that the average wait in the non-century line was 20 minutes. And then the site visitor said it had gone up by the time he was there to 30 minutes. Do you have data where it is now? I, I realize you're at four different ports, but uh, do you have any, any current data about the, that, that reduction in wait time? Yes, sir. Right now, the wait times have grown up, so is the number of the crossers. Right now, it is an initiative of INS and U.S. Customs to maintain that wait time at about 20 minutes. Right now, at Otay Mesa, that is at about 20 to 25 minutes. Uh, talked about the increased convenience to travelers, about the uh, stimulus to commerce, and about the fact that there's not a uh, compromise of security. What about the matter of savings? I see in your report some indication of the investment you've had to make in order to make the system work, but should eventually uh, INS anticipate getting some savings out of systems like this, that is, perhaps by reducing the numbers of people involved in monitoring border crossings? Sentry is a new process and a different thought pattern on how to move traffic through into an, and increase the security using the staff that we have. It is part of Sentry's future vision to be able to reduce the amount of inspection time 
dedicated to this low risk crew. Um, for actual savings, I couldn't attribute a, a specific factor to it, you know, back to that sort of thing. Yeah. We've learned so far about your pilot program in Otay Mesa. Uh, what problems do you anticipate when you have to expend to a very great extent to open a San Isidro? Boy, uh, <laughs> that's an immense question, sir. Uh, problems well, limited to security, then. To security, sir. Um, the, the organized smuggler that sends me somebody that is low risk with the deliberate thought that they are low risk. We answer that by scrubbing that population at this point 6%. The chances of that person being caught as an organized smuggler is much greater than going through the normal lanes. Um, the, the casual smuggler isn't going to get in my lane because his risk is higher. He'll take his chances in the other lane. 